<laughs> um, That's right. All right, let's get this show on the road. I'm going to let the title card go down. Getting what you want in 2022, also known as how I learned not to hate setting goals. All right, let me dip the music so you can actually hear me talk and stop the screen share. I'm going to spotlight me and Tim because we're going to be yucking it up today and telling some stories that hopefully are meaningful to everyone. Greetings, Tim. Say, um, hey. Please, why don't you do the welcome, the intro to the briefing this week? Sure. Hey, welcome to the briefing this week. It's good to be with you all. What is the um, to be here? Uh, this is uh, this is an opportunity that we all have to kind of share our thoughts, ideas, and issues that are coming up within the community. It is uh, kind of a goal every week for Joel and I to put our ear to the ground, understand what people are talking about, what's important to reference. Obviously, in the year, um, we're going to talk about some big issues today with with goal setting. Uh, I'll just say before we jump in too far, Joel, once again, congratulations on wrapping Jumpstart. That's really oh, awesome. The graduation was today. Joel wore his cap and gown and the whole the whole oh, thing. Let me share my screen because it is kind of funny to. Okay, continue, Tim. Go on. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's great. You know what I see over and over again from Jumpstart and the class that comes out is. There you know, is. we're often saying we want an opportunity for people to do for transformation. Like we want them to understand something different, walk away with something different. Um, and the, just the clarity and confidence that um, the current class has, the work that they did in their positioning, getting their companies in order, it's super great. So congratulations to you and all the all those folks. Yeah, it's always an interesting moment for me because I'll be like completely vulnerable. I always go through this process of teaching all these concepts, right? Eight modules, eight weeks. And I wonder... Does this, I mean, really, does this matter? Because it's all old hat to me. And today is that day when everyone is saying, here's what I learned. Here's the top takeaways. Here's what's changed. You know, I raised my prices. I figured out who I am. I'm, I'm clear. I'm confident. So for me, it's, it's probably my favorite day of the process when everyone says, yes, it does matter. <laughs> and that, this whole group is now going to be part of Confab, which I know that we're doing kind of, uh, we're just going to introduce the production method. We just wrapped the production masterclass, but the production method into your confab and, and making that whole thing happen. So um, a great, a great evolution for all those companies. Well, what we do is we take anybody who goes through Jumpstart and we say, hey, come into confab for a month, which is like jump into this mastermind. There's a group of owners that are just meeting weekly to process things. And here, I'll show you, I'll give everyone a peek. This is what we started processing yesterday. So it's this you know, I call it a worksheet, but it really it's a method of, of setting goals. But it's this bigger idea that, Tim, you and I always talk about of the best way to deal with the future is to create it. So we're going through this process, this worksheet, and, you know, th this is part of this method that I wanted to share today, um, because I think everyone has a certain amount of reluctance around goal setting. I don't know. Is there, is there something in the creative mind that resists setting goals? <laughs> Right. I'm going to say, I know it's so interesting, isn't it? Like, I, I feel very lucky in college. I was part of a, a leadership group that truly was a strategy group for the college. And um, I was the student representative for it. And so I remember really in a, at a young age, understanding goals and how those goals, which is really just a vision or a purpose to what you want to do and within a certain time frame, and then breaking that into objectives and then strategies and actions, right? so that you could actually accomplish that goal. Inside of RevThink, I feel like we're, we natively talk people through goals because we say the best way to deal with the future is to create it. So we're asking somebody, what future do you expect? What are your returns from the work you're doing that you expect? Let's break that into strategies, actions, and objectives so that we can get to those goals. And then we have the tools and methods to, to make that happen. So I feel like goals, when we say the word goals, it's something that everyone does, everyone wants, we know it, but that word itself like makes people jump like, oh, well, I'll be restricted or, or I'll, I'll be judged against failure or something like that. Well, this, so here's, here's right, this, this moment I'm thinking of is, and this is maybe 20 years ago. Actually, it was about 20 years ago. I remember one year, everyone talking about what are your, what are gonna be your new year's resolutions, Joel? And I was so annoyed. I don't know, it's a cliche, right? And to me, it just sounded like, 
well, I'm going to write down a bunch of stuff that I'm supposedly going to do. Really, what I'm going to do is just feel guilty about not having done all these things. <laughs> yeah. Right on about January 14th, when I say I'm not, I'm not doing this. And there was an inflection point because at the time I had a mentor. I was going through some coaching um, with an entrepreneurial organization, and I remember they were very big on goal setting. And I thought, oh God, okay. They say this stuff was really great. So I guess I'll subject myself to it. And I'll skip past all of the details just to say this. The thing when the like light bulb went off in my head was when the facilitator said, oh, no, no, Joel, you don't understand. Goals are there to serve you. You're not there to serve goals. And by that, I mean, you have full permission to change any goal at any time for any reason. Because if you're not buying into a goal and making progress on it, then just kill it. Just delete it. Because you're not buying into it, it's not serving you. And I thought, well, all right, I can get on board with this plan. And that started me on this journey of like starting to learn how to love goals. So for people here that are listening, let me encourage you. Goals are simply there to serve you, right? Like if it's if it's not your jam, freaking forget about it, delete it, take it, take it off, right? You have permission to change it, revise it, upgrade it, downgrade it, prioritize it, deprioritize it. Like it's just there to serve you. So I don't know, Tim, if that, does that resonate? Yeah, with you? you know what? Uh, my wife and I had that a personal experience that way when we were, did our first, we were young and we did our first financial planning session with a financial planner and to, when he asked the questions, you know, what are your big pictures and goals? And it's, a, it's truly one of those first times where I might have expressed something that my wife never heard or she expressed something I never heard. And I thought to myself, wait, you want to do that? How, you know, how, how will we ever get there with the finite amount of money that we have? How do we understand how that works? And then to break that down into such a way that we understand that just like goals, you finance those goals. That the money isn't there as a scorecard. The money is there as a tool to move yourself forward and finance those goals. And I think most of us, what we don't understand is that when we, you know, today, when we talk about navigating, we all have a GPS with exact coordinates and every turn we're supposed to take. But true navigation is something that when you're doing it in the air or on the sea, you're using markers to see if you're on point. But the wind blows you the way the wind blows you and you adjust to it. But you have to know where you want to end up or you're just going to go the way the wind blows or go nowhere if the wind's not blowing. The same is true as you're living out your life or running a business is that we know we have an objective of where we want to go. Because of that, we can we can react and have purpose in the things that we're doing. That's the key. I know the purpose of why, why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'll emphasize that again, why I'm doing what I'm doing. And that why becomes your life. The why becomes your career. The you know, goals or the future is what I'm going towards, but every day I live out that why. That's why I can have integrity. That's why I can have strength. That's why I can have vision and purpose. That's why I'm contagious so that people want to join my boat because they know that we're going in the right direction. And then what we want to do is practice a method of evaluation, understanding a method and make sure we're still on course. So that simple method is really, when we say goal setting, we're saying, let's talk about the simple method to get to the bigger pictures of why, why we're doing what we do. Well, one of the things you said reminded me of this old analogy that, um, that like setting goals and going forward towards a vision is like flying a plane because a plane is actually never on course. It's just a matter of how much off course is it. And then you, you, you course correct. So as you're flying, you're never really like on your bearing. You're just wondering how far am I off of it? But if you don't have the bearing to begin with, to your point, you're, you're, I don't know where you end up, but you, you don't end yeah. up where you want to go. And so some people, if you told them that's the truth and running a business, they'd freak out, hmm. right? Because they feel like I'm out of control, right? So, they, so if I say, let's set goals, some people here, you're just going to remind me how out of control I am. That's the first objective or first hurdle they want to have. Hmm. The second one might be that they're afraid to talk about something as if I'm just on a joy flight. Don't worry about it. I don't need, I just need to know where I start and land. The rest of it is just joy. And then we have to remind them that's not true. Like you only get to live out this life once. Your career is something you have to leverage and build up to. You can't just go on a series of joy flights and hope to achieve what you wanted to in your life and in your career. So that reminder too is almost like, oh, that accountability isn't so great. 
And I think what you and I are saying here is like, we understand those fears. That's not true. We're, what we're going to do is talk about a method and tools. You own that part. You already know you're not on a joy flight or you wouldn't be listening to Rev Think on a Thursday afternoon, talk about something. It's just not true. You already are adults. You already are mature and you're already to, ready to accomplish something. So let's, let's understand that part of it. And the other part is you're not out of control. You, you are on this call. You understand some method. You deliver all the time, course correcting all the time. So you deliver projects using the same understanding and belief. So we can, we can get that same purpose happening here. And really, that, let's break through that part of it today and realize oh, what we're trying to talk about here is really just a great method and purpose to get these objectives done. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, after I learned this lesson and started to learn not to hate goals, as I call it, that I started viewing goals as like a school. Like, what if I went to class every year and I just go through this process and come back and revisit them. But I'm, I'm not saying anything that's really hardcore or strict or rigid. It's, it's very, very fluid. But to, to your point, Tim, something you just mentioned reminded me, most of the people in Confab yesterday, when we went through this first step of this four-step process, I'm about to write it, write it down and show everybody. The interesting takeaway that everyone came away with was, oh, if I could go back to January 1st of this year and tell myself what I know now, you know what the number one, like everybody said it, the number one thing that everybody would say to themselves back in January 1st is don't be afraid. Meaning set those goals and go for it. Like it's okay. Like you're going to adjust, you're going to adapt things. You're going to get thrown curveballs, but you're going to be okay because most everybody in the group felt like I held back. It was actually a time to invest and I was retreating. I was protecting, I was playing it safe. And I look back now and I have regret because if I just wouldn't have been so afraid, I could have set some really simple goals and been much more excited or satisfied with where I'm sitting now. So let me, um, I'll do, I'll, let me turn my camera on. Tell me if you can see, can you see my screen here, Tim? Yep. Great. So here's, here's the simple, here's my little. We're simple. going to go Bob Ross today, Hanjo. We're doing the Bob Ross thing. <laughs> That's right. Wait, I should go get, I was Bob Ross for Halloween. I should go get my wig. Um, <laughs> okay. So here's, here's the simple uh, thing that I want to draw for everybody is there's this idea of it's the end of the year, right? And this is this really rare moment where I want each of you to realize you're going to be reflective, it's the holidays, it's almost the year end. So here's what's gonna happen, is you're going to reflect, okay? Then as you process those reflections, right? You're gonna think, how do I feel about that? How do I feel about regret? Or how do I feel about excitement? How do I feel about all of these lessons that I learned or these things that I accomplished? And from that, you can set what I just would say is, now you're gonna intend. Now, as you intend, I like to say this, imagine if you put a label on all of next year. And I said, hey, Tim, 2022 is going to be the year of what? Right, you might say it's gonna be the year of like, <laughs> here's a funny story. One year, my business partner, he said, Joel, this year is going to be the year of Steve. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? I didn't mind that. It was like the year he was saying, this year is the year I get what I want. I've been investing. I've been working so hard for everybody else. This year, I get what I want. And I was like, great. I like that intention. So what do we do with an intention, though? So the next step in your process here is you're going to start to envision Okay, and apologies, I'm running out of real estate here. Now, envision is when you start to say, well, if I have this intention and the year of 2022 is gonna be the year of proactivity or the year of investment or <laughs> the year of getting the credit we deserve, then the next thing you're gonna do is you're just gonna simply start to act. That's right. Right? And if you notice though, there's, what are we seeing here? This is essentially a continuum <clears throat> along here, right? 
where we're moving from where? We're right here today. This is the present. Oops. Here's the past and here's the future. And if you just look at this as a simple framework for thinking and making notes and capturing them and writing them down, here's what I know is gonna happen because we're gonna do this uh, week after next in Confab. And, I might, I, and of course, this is the process we're doing for all of our clients as, as well in, inside RevThink. Once you start writing things down, there's something magical that happens. I can't explain it, but what I can tell you is if you write them down using a good framework, I would actually tell everyone, you know what, after you write them down, you know what I want you to do with those goals? It's really important, Tim, listen carefully. Throw them away. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Throw them in the trash, okay? The principle here- Because it's not a scorecard. You're not making a scorecard. No. Yeah. And I, I, the, um, I don't know if it was Eisenhower or Churchill who said, a plan is worthless, but planning is everything. Okay, so the process of thinking through this and writing it down, that's planning, but the plan is worthless. You can throw that away. Now, sure, for you brown nosers, you can put it in a drawer and promise yourself you're going to get it, <laughs> right? Once a quarter or something, and that's fine too. That's, of course, totally okay. But you'll be amazed if you pull that thing out six months from now or a year later and you haven't thought about it, you haven't looked at it, you haven't measured yourself against it, you're going to be like, holy cow did that, got that done, made progress on that, you know, changed that, switched that, whatever. It's really yeah. cool the way the brain sees those patterns and then it starts to look for those things out in the universe and then it synthesizes to create the future as we call it. And so Joel, this is one of those things in life and I'm, for some, for some reason, I'm seeing this more and more and more in, in different areas, but this is one of those, those things in life where the life outside of our body so the life that we're watching and observing other people, the way it looks to us is they act and therefore, and therefore they, because of their actions, they receive the goal. I mean, they, they, they receive something. And then what we're doing is watching someone's action and we're reflecting on their actions. So then when we think about doing it ourselves, we think that must be the way you do it. I'll act first and then we'll reflect on the, my actions. And the reality is, please don't. What you want to do is reflect first, act on those. So the life outside of our, of our mind and our eyes is always in reverse of what you actually need to do to accomplish that life. It's best first to understand where you want to go. How do I know that? Your reflection, your inside thoughts, what you're calling and your purpose, the reason you wake up, the reason you, you have kids, the reason why you don't have kids. So whatever those things are, are the life you want to live and that to know what that is is the guidepost and then begin that process of building out something to have a goal that eventually gets you to actions. That's, that's how we want you to do it first. That's why we know the best way to deal with the future is to create it. We say that intentionally so that people know like start now doing those things, that future is possible for you. Yeah. Well, I also love the, this, this picture you just reminded me of in, in my brain where each of us, as we approach your end, we're gonna be sitting next to a fire with our partner, having a glass of wine saying, wow, what did all that mean? And obviously the bit, your business is simply there to support your life, right? Like it's not the other way around. It's, it's ultimately the means to an end call. I want to live well. This is what it means for me to live well. Um, let me show my screen, Tim, because I'm going to show this other glimpse here of this, where this is going to end. And this is, you can create your own version of this. This is what we're doing with our clients. It's, and I want you to notice this paint the picture thing here. So you can write down any number of little ways you're going to measure or your goals. So for something like this, you might say this year, we're going to do 2 million, right? This year, we're going to do a project that's over 500K. We're going to finally get our splits to be 50-50, right? <laughs> Tim, you're like, that's it? That's your goal? That's all, yeah, um, that's, <laughs> please right? don't do that. <laughs> so you, can, you can do all this, right? And then of course, I always like to make a note of the top 20 relationships that I'm gonna focus on in a given year. So we'll, we'll have people fill those out. This type of process is what I call painting the picture. Now, I want you to tell me if I came, if I was an owner, Tim, and I came to you and I said, okay, I've painted the picture. Now, how do I actually start to execute on it other than just these are a lot of nice intentions? 
Yeah, I, I was actually just going to say that too, because what we do with this is then write, go right into our factors method, right? And I, in the past, even as, as rev thinkers, we've worked with our clients and kind of in, in a one hour session, ask, ask them their goals and then plug in, you know, plug, grab the factors report and start plugging in, you know, how we're going to finance those goals. And this year we've decided to break it into two different sessions, right? The first one is to do exactly this exercise. Let's walk through those goals and intentions and make sure that, that has its own place. Then we can grab the formulas and the math. And then in early January, we just walk through the factors report and begin the factors method. And simply put, the factors method is when we not just understand what our goals are, but we use the revenue that comes from our clients to finance those goals. So there are things that we have to dedicate to project costs, direct costs. There are things we have to dedicate to indirect costs, which helps us run the business. But there has to be a portion of it left over that we finance our future. And by financing our future and making that a priority and not giving it all away to the client or have no lack, or have a lack of purpose and therefore spending it all on, on internal costs that were unnecessary, we actually focus and then we can achieve that, achieve those goals. So that's that's right. That's the next place we go as Rev Think is let's go right into that factors report, begin the factors method. That factors report then creates what you pointed to earlier splits of what, how we've split out that revenue on a project by project basis. And now for on a project by project basis, on a week by week basis, month by month, quarter by quarter, we live out the financial picture of that and therefore finance those goals and, and green light those projects and bring on that, that team and start that sales process. And all those other ingredients that we have to run within our business, it can begin going. It's a the perfect jump start for that. Well, I'm glad you, um, I'm glad you, beat me to the punch because I was about to ask, hey, for anyone here that doesn't understand what you mean by the factors method, what the heck is that? Um, you might want to reiterate that because what I, what I heard you saying is, or I, well, I'll say this, what I've heard you say in the past that I really liked a lot was you said, if you're running, say, a million dollar a year business, what is it you have one, a million one dollar decisions to make throughout the year and the power of having clarity around, well, how are we going to make those decisions and empower others to make those decisions so that we create the future we want? If we could do that, that would be pretty cool. Yeah. And, and it works against the tendency to say, I'm going to get as much money as I can. I'm going to work really, really hard. And I hope there's something left over. Right. That's how when we first run a business, we actually don't know much, except for we can achieve something. We're hard workers and we don't even know who our clients are. So we start off our business in that kind of primary, easy way. But as you mature in business ownership, you can identify that revenue, those revenue streams. And I work with, if you don't believe me, I'll work with you, but I work with client after client. And I say, what's your financial goal? And it scares them. And then I break it down five or six questions later, they can totally see where every dollar is going to come from. Then we can say, where are those dollars going to go? And we finance that thing using the factors report, building out that whole process put that on, onto the project roll-up. And then one year from now, they say, I have no idea where this million dollars came from that's sitting in my savings account. I was like, I do. We, we made those decisions and it's there. And I know you started this year as a million dollar business. So it's unusual to sit with a million dollars in cash at the end of the year, but like, that's it. Now we have this problem called taxes and we have to start talking about, you know, how we're going to deal with that issue. <laughs> but that's the, over and over and over again, we've seen people double their revenue, increase their profits, loosen up their loosen up the the decision making giving it to the production team and then financing their life goals their 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 business goals and their career goals start financing that we'll never get there if we don't well you're um this is honestly like a bit of ptsd for me right yeah you hate this you really hate this <laughs> conversation sometimes well it's like it's a love hate <laughs> relationship with this topic because there's so much regret i have around oh my god if i would have just discovered this before because when you went through the whole um just make as much money as you can and that whole paradigm mm -hmm. i was like were you recording me when i used to say that back in my former life because that's that's so true. And I have so much uh, frustration and regret about that. Now, the, the love side of it is it's so freaking cool when people start to embrace the method and apply it. And I get to be a, an enabler or facilitator 
um, to, to, I just want my company to be not crazy, all, you know, driving me crazy all the time. I want to have more freedom. Uh, I want to produce better work. And then these other strategic byproducts show up like profits, right? Like savings, like how are we going to, you know, what should we do with all this money other than pay a lot of taxes? That, those are really good, good problems. So that, that part of it, I love. <laughs> yeah, I don't regret it either because if you were successful in business, you wouldn't be working at RevThink either. So <laughs> everybody wins on this one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I see, uh, see Eric and Cherish, some of my former collaborators, uh, laughing a little more heartily than I wish yeah. before. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, um, Tim, I was going to say, in terms of where we go with this, um, do we have a, like a, a final encouragement or, or a direction that we can point people? Obviously, in the community, we'll happily answer questions, and we should um, st feel free to start a thread or something if, if you have a question. But where else yeah. can we people? I know that, I mean, if, if you're one of our clients, we're going to be sending you an email for some time slots. We're going to go through the goal, goal method as a group. Um, so small groups. So if you're one of our clients, you will be in your sign up for that. You'll get that. Joel, if you're part of the confabbers are also going through this as a, as a mastermind group, a little bit different process for, for a mastermind, but because they're doing it more themselves than we are. Um, but then also, I'm, I think, Joel, we would we could probably give out the worksheets or kind of figure out a way of, of maybe if you want to kind of, I don't know what your thoughts are, but put something out there where the whole community can join in and, and you can just teach them what the worksheets are. Yeah, no, I would love that. So if there's a lot of interest in the community to do like, let's do a group um, and we'll all go through this process together. Of course, I would, I think that would be, that'd be a blast. So if, if that excites you, DM me, drop me or start a thread on the community and we'll figure it out. Yeah. We can okay. make some happen. There's only two working weeks left in this year, by the way. I mean, we should say, tell people right now, the, the last week of December, last two weeks of December, we were not going to do the weekly briefing. So the 20, well, I guess it's the 23rd and the 30th. So there's only two more weekly briefings left in this year. There's only really two work weeks up there. So if that's something we want to do, we should probably cram that in in the next 10 days. And it would take, what's it going to take a half hour to kind of show people the worksheet? And each yeah, of the probably, goal items. Um, we could probably go through the whole thing stem to stern in about an hour so it could be like an hour workshop or something if people are interested so oh that's a good idea yeah just make a, put a workshop out there front yep all right well tim thank you for uh for sharing that i love how you turned the corner from like like the whole envisioning and goal setting thing into like oh and here's how you actually turn that into a uh, an actual plan that you go execute you know day by day month by month quarter by quarter like for me that was like the coin dropping in the slot all over again yeah, that is possible. So um, I'll just say it again. I, I can't remember if I said it already today, but we exist so you can thrive in business, life, and career. And I think you can hear that playing itself out right here. That if you, if we want to have a conversation with you about what that career looks like, what your life wants to look like as you look back on it in the future, therefore, what these moments in your business need to look like so we can make those things come true. Those are the tools and practices and methods that we put in place every week, every day. So um, uh, please, if there's anything we can do to help you, anything, any encouragement that you need, any thoughts that you have, please jump in Rev community and, and share that with us. We, we'd love that, that input. And I am dropping that link. So if anyone doesn't have that, if you're not in the community, um, please join us. All right, that is this week's weekly briefing. Thanks everyone for joining. Thanks for letting me tell some old stories. Um, Tim, thank you as always. Yeah, of course. Uh, We'll, we'll, get, we'll see you all next week, if not before. Yeah, take care. Bye, everyone.